In this short segment, we'll look at the process environment and the environment parameter preparatory to using it with the exec system calls. In any operating system, it's useful for a process to have access to information about the context or the environment, uh, to use the exact term, in which it's running. Environment information might include the name of the computer, uh, the logged in user who's running the process, the home directory of the user, lists of other important directories such as those holding executable commands or loadable libraries. The way such information is obtained differs from language to language and the exact content differs per operating system. But all C programs under any operating system get their environment information via a parameter to main. The environment parameter, traditionally named ENVP, is a third parameter after the argc and argv discussed in earlier topics. Like those parameters, it's ignored if you don't declare it, but it can be used if you do, as on line three of our short example here. Now, like argv, envp is a double character pointer, and it points to a block of care pointers, which in turn point to strings. It's, in other words, exactly like argv in structure. Like argv's pointer block, envp's block ends with a null pointer. But envp has no corresponding integer argument, like argc giving the size of its block. The only way to determine the size of the block is to traverse the pointers in the block until reaching that terminating null. Now that sort of traverse is exactly what lines 4 through 5 of our example do. They repeatedly check to see if uh, ENVP's target is non-null, uh, and if so, uh, they print the string pointed to by the target and advance ENVP to the next pointer in its block. Now, like argv, ENVP can be walked down its block of pointers and altered if you don't mind losing track of the start of the block. The output of that loop shows on lines uh, 10 through 21 down here. These are typical strings in a Unix environment. And you'll notice that all of them follow the format key equals and value, where key is a short string, usually though not always capitalized, and it identifies the information in the value. Looking at a few examples, and there's no need to understand them all, but uh, for instance, we can see on line 11 that our command shell is the program slash bin slash bash, a common version of the Unix command shell. On line 13, we can see that the uh, user running the program is uh, Cease Daily. Uh, on line 16, we can see that uh, the program's working directory, PWD, is uh, home Cease Daily modules, uh, etc. Now, of particular note, by the way, is the path environment variable, which as you can see is a set of directories separated by colons. Now, when you execute a Unix command, you're almost always running some program that resides in one of several directories reserved to hold executable programs, such as slash bin, slash user slash bin, etc. The command ls, for instance, is slash user slash bin slash ls. You can type the full path name if you like, but if you type just ls, the command shell program uses the path environment to find the right directory. It hunts through the list of directories from left to right until it finds one that has the ls command and runs that command. Interestingly, the command shell will not automatically run even a program in the current directory unless path includes dot as one of the directories. For instance, if we had down here at the end of uh, user games a colon and then a dot. Absent that entry, to run an executable a dot out in the current directory requires writing dot slash a dot out. Paths or lists of directories to search are pretty common environment variables in any OS. The command path is just one example. For instance, any Java program relies on a class path environment variable to find class or jar files that it needs. All of this matters in the upcoming discussion of exec because several versions of that system call use the path variable to find the executable to be run. So here's a couple of quick questions for you. 
First, get the value of path for your personal Unix account by running the command printenv in your command shell. Printenv works a lot like our example program here. It prints out the current environment. Then look up the which command in Unix docs and use it to determine the location of ls, vi, and the C compiler on your system. Coming back from a pause there. There's really no general answer here. It depends on your system. But you should have learned that which takes the name of an executable, for instance, which ls, and tells you what path directory the executable was found in. Here's question two. Putting dot in your path, the current directory, is common enough practice, but only a patsy puts dot as the first entry in their path, or indeed anywhere in the path, but as the last entry. What could a nefarious user do to you if you put dot first in the path? In particular, consider that another user could place executables of any name in his home directory, which you might visit. Coming back from a pause there, what you might have come up with is, if the user creates executables and puts them in his home directory, giving them names like ls or vi, and if you visit his home directory, making it the current directory, and your path looks first at dot, then you'll run his executables, whatever they might actually do, when you meant to run the system commands. The first directory and path that has a matching executable name is the one that gets used. You want dot to be the last resort directory at the end of your path, if you put it in your path at all. So where do the argv and envp parameters come from? It might seem that the operating system is the obvious answer, but in fact they are set by the process that starts a new execution via an exec system call, as we'll see in the next lecture segment. The exec system calls we'll be looking at provide a means to pass both argv and envp content to a newly started executable. In the case of the command shell, all the blank separated words on the command line, starting with the command itself, are passed by the shell as the argv contents to the newly executed command. Any process starting another executable usually passes along the same envp values that it had, perhaps with a few modifications. When you log in and start the command shell process, the command shell runs configuration files that set its environment, and it passes that environment along to all other programs you run from it. 